pressure dropping. That pressure is just about zero. I'm starting to see PR here. Sorry, sorry test impressions. Got it. Okay, that's a wrap. Good job. Simulation is kind of a bridge between classroom and real life experiences. It's a lot, it allows the learner to be able to practice kind of real life experiences and then get feedback on how they did in a safe environment. We have high fidelity patient rooms created to be flexible to allow for different learners. So we can make them into a neonatal intensive care unit room or we can make them into an OB room or a regular inpatient room. We also have exam rooms that are created to look like an outpatient room. We have debriefing rooms that allow for video playback and we have a skills lab that allows for technical skill training. In the control room, you'll find the simulation technician and he or she is running the mannequin on these computerized tablets. And they'll be watching through our, our mirrored glass and also on our AV system. Our AV system allows for time stamping of the video to be able to do video playback during the debriefing sessions. Debriefing and simulation is kind of known as one of the most important parts of the whole exercise. After the simulation experience, we go to the debriefing room and we, we really just talk about it. We talk about what went well and what we can improve on, but it's really kind of the heart of it. Communication breakdown is where medical error occurs. We're, we're trained in silos, and then we all are expected to come together and work as this well-oiled machine, but we don't learn that in school, and so it's important to have a learning environment after school where we can learn to function as a team so that we can make patient care safer. I participated in the Restronomy simulation, and we were here um, for about four hours, and um, it, it, w it went really quickly. As we went on through the simulation, at first you're kind of nervous, you're not sure what's going on, and then after you've done this three or four times, you get much more comfortable with it, and you feel like, wow, now you know you could go back to your unit and, and you, can, you can do this. You know what everybody's role is, who's doing what, and what you're supposed to be doing, and uh, you get a lot more confidence. It's really a good idea to be able to practice on, you know, in a non-life-threatening situation. Every single level of healthcare provider can benefit from using simulation. So when we come in confident in knowing how to do something, the patient feels that, we feel that, and that just sets up a better energy between the two of us. We have a program here called Reflective Simulation that's focused specifically on performing the simulation within the clinical unit in which somebody works. So we go to that clinical unit, we actually walk through an everyday clinical situation. So it's been an incredibly powerful tool to helping make quality improvement up in the clinical unit. The simulation center takes us to a whole new level in disaster preparedness. You have to be prepared and constantly drilled to make sure that all of your staff, patient, visitors are going to be safe in the event of a disaster. Because we're all about simulation, whenever we simulate a disaster in the community, uh, our education specialists can help prepare those scenarios so that we can gain the most out of them. We actually have a little bit of Hollywood going on here where we can take a volunteer and make them look like they've been in a disaster so that when they present to the emergency room, we have to respond as though we're actually encountering a trauma victim. Moulage makes disaster situations very realistic. Having this type of simulation center and being able to use the tools they have in collaboration with what we normally do has been outstanding. Simulation provides um, a safe, controlled environment where students can practice um, some of the skills and competencies that they've learned. Uh, the Simulation Center actually provides a way that students can get feedback as we watch some of the recordings. Students can understand how they're going to function under stress. They learn 
uh, by functioning under stress. Again, all this before they go out to the clinical rotations. One of the nicest things about this simulation center is that it provides a multiple uh, different learning opportunities. So we have some uh, high fidelity simulators as they're called, basically high tech um, uh, computers that function almost like people. We have other situations where the students are interacting with a real person, someone that we've trained or given a script to to act a certain way or act a certain part. And then there are also some other mannequins that are specifically skills based. All of these things are, are available to us and we've been using them so far. It's been fantastic. The EMU affiliation was really kind of a matter of perfect timing. St. Joe's had been doing simulation in lots of different areas for a long time and we realized we really wanted to integrate under one roof. And so when EMU came to us with the notion of starting a new physician assistant program and said that they needed to use simulation as part of that training program, our executives said, why don't we create something that will in benefit both institutions? I would say that everybody knows kind of intuitively that practice makes perfect. And our simulation center is a place where we allow our uh, staff and our trainees to come and practice the things that they routinely have to do uh, to help patients get better um, so that they can be perfect at it. Important ways that we use simulation is for what we call rare event training. So when, say, a car accident victim comes in who's critically ill and, you know, really their life is then measured in minutes, it's very important that the team that's associated with taking care of that patient knows exactly what their roles and responsibilities are because every experience is an experience. And even though it's not a real patient, it reminds everybody about the basic procedures and things that need to be done in order to optimize the outcome when it is a real patient. Research has shown us that not everything needs to be taught this way, but there are many things that are too important and too critical to saving lives not to teach them this way. I believe in what we do here. This is, this is important. It's changing our culture of safety and it's changing how we're able to provide safe care to patients.